Pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum, pasito tum tum. Hello, this is Chef Willy. Welcome to a classic modern review. Kisses for my president, Lincoln. What do they have in common? These are about the presidency. Blah. Shut up and start reading a book, dumbass. Yes, the U.S. presidents. So much history in them, as well as the amount of drama that it is to get there, only to deal with more drama. It's the elections everyone looks forward to. It's like a betting game. You're rooting for your team to win, but nervous at the same time that your team might lose and have to put up with four years reminding yourself that they lost. Or maybe even eight. So with these elections coming to an end, I'm gonna take a look at these movies about the presidency from the classics is Kisses for my president. The story about the first ever female president in the 60s. What? Even they thought of that back then? Well, <laughs> how is that gonna come along to be good? It didn't. The reason that it bombed was not for the obvious reason that it's a woman with power in the 60s, but because it came at the wrong time. A year later passed and it was still fresh the memory of John F. Kennedy's assassination that didn't seem the right time to make fun of the presidency. Still, I don't know if it would have been a hit for the way they approached it. If anything, this should have been taken more seriously. But I guess even the writers didn't have enough faith that a presidential woman would be taken seriously in the 60s. Polly Bergen, who plays the president, doesn't have that many funny lines. In fact, she's not even the main central focus. Instead, it's about her husband, who's not happy for his wife's new post for being thrown into the sidelines and tries to be taken more seriously, but counts out more as an idiot. I could not stand this guy. He's like that butler from Aristocats, who has selfish motivations but comes out as a twit that resembles more to a National Lampoon meets Family Guy. The tone is all over the place. Is it a political drama? Is it a family picture? Is it a cartoon coming to life? They don't talk much about the themes or responsibility of a woman holding office. I'll give her that. She's treated with dignity and does some presidential things and deals with a funny Mexican dictator, but most of the time she's in the role of the mother or wife that the ending pretty much ruins the purpose of this movie. Still, I'm surprised they thought about this premise even in the 60s. I don't think back then they thought it was possible, but now with these elections showing the coming day that a woman could actually run for president, might happen very soon, even if our options suck. And maybe this film might even hold a lot more weight. In some aspects, this movie doesn't work, but its premise is very interesting for the time it came out, and it's not a bad idea to view a woman's presidency on the point of view of the husband. Probably could have been a classic if it wouldn't shown up at the wrong time, which sent it into obscurity. I would still recommend it, though it's not as easy to find, as well as these other classic, presidential, movies. Could you please make this easier to find? It would be appreciated. I give it 5.5 .5 out of 10 stars. Now we move on to the modern reviews with Lincoln from 2012. Here's a fun story, a few years ago when I was getting interested in history, I actually went and bought this movie because I thought I'm finally gonna understand what's going on in politics and maybe, just maybe, I might actually like it. Damn it, it sucked! The second view was even worse! And because I didn't understand it, I just avoided it. However, years passed by and I decided to take one more look at the film, really, to hate on it. And... Surprisingly, I actually understood their English better. I was ready to give it a bad review, but like everyone says, the third is always the charm. It's already considered a classic by many. For me, I think it's a strong, solid movie. This is not a biography of Abraham Lincoln's life, 
It takes place when Lincoln, played by Daniel Day-Lewis, tries to pass the 13th Amendment to abolish slavery and hopefully end the Civil War. The fact that this movie had a huge star power really made it more significant. It has Sally Field, Tommy Lee Jones, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Lee Pace from The Hobbit, Jackie Early Haley, even Kylo Ren makes a cameo, and even Bra Long from The Dark Side, Harry Osborn! Hey dude, I don't know what I'm doing here dude, but I'm cool man. As most of you know, it was directed by Steven Spielberg, who studied for many years the life in Lincoln before filming it. Now that's a lot of homework, and you can tell as he portrays Lincoln as someone very relatable and not the boring political man many expect. Daniel Lewis is perfectly identical to Abe Lincoln. I mean, look at them. They could even pass as brothers. What was interesting about him was his interaction with other people of how he would always have a different reaction towards them as a leader, as a father, and as a husband. Demonstrating his several layers of how he could be an inspirational guide for advice, a patient, loved, caring man, but also at times an angry person. Most of those reactions would manifest under his wife's intimidation, played by Sally Field, who is also great at bringing the emotion of the story. There's a bit of comedy to keep our interest. The best moments are the debates, when Democrats and Republicans are butt-hitting each other in order to pass the bill or not. It brings a lot of energy, and it's entertaining to hear them argue in such over-the-topness. Oh, and speaking of energy, Tommy Lee Jones is awesome. He has some very funny lines, and during his speeches made me think of saying, Hey, that actually makes sense! By the way, I just love how this guy reacts to Tommy Lee Jones insulting him. Are more reptile than man, George. So low and flat that the foot of man is incapable of crushing how you. How dare you! How dare you, Swin! But even I could see through that hair. That was a wig. I even saw it moving once. What? You thought you could fool us that that is his real hair? Oh, so it is a wig after all. Well, at least they do acknowledge it and not go along with. Ha ah, ah, ha! No, no, no! Why? Put it back on! Put it back on! Tell <laughs> me! <gasps> Nothing against bald people. I understand why many would be bored by this movie. Trust me, I know, I got bored by this one too. At the middle, it's when it falls slow at times that it makes me lose my interest. It's not a war movie filled with action pack, it's plenty of talk about how to create a bill. That's it. If you don't know some basic political terms, you're not gonna like this one and pretty much feel bored. But the arguments and dialogues are interesting enough to keep watching as if it was a play. I don't think I can say there's an actor here that was awful, they're all great. The cinematography is wide enough to look at everywhere, and for a John Williams score, I think it's okay. It managed to show this man had pressures in life, as a president, and as a family man. If this film doesn't divide viewers, then it might stand through the test of time. I give it a 7.5 out of 10 stars. So have you seen any of these movies? What are your thoughts on it? Did you like them? Did you not like them? Did you not like any of them? And as a whole, what's your overall take on these elections? I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. You can leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe. What would be some movies you'd like me to review later? And remember, no matter what happens in these elections, just keep in mind... I uh, gotta help us. Tune in next time for more reviews to come. So for now, that's it for today. <gasps> Ciao.